Hello everyone, back to you into today's first video. We're going to have a look at the ECMWF 30 day ensembles for today's uh, first video via the Hungarian uh, Met Office. So a big thank you to the Hungarian Met Office for providing uh, these charts uh, for us. So we're going to um, go through the week by week breakdown. So they are broken down into week periods. There's four uh, weeks worth of uh, charts to show you so um, takes us right way through uh, to the end of September so I'll get on with that for you uh, very shortly and uh, just so today's uh, second video will be coming up on the home page this afternoon and I'm just going to have a detailed look at the weather for the next week to 10 days we'll also bring you up to date with all of the latest in terms of tropical storms and hurricanes particularly hurricane uh, Florence, which we're hearing a lot about now and will continue to do so as it heads ever closer for the um, east coast of America. It does look like it's going to be a big impact on the Carolinas. So more about that in today's second video coming up this afternoon. Right, so we'll start off by having a look at uh, the temperature and precipitation anomalies uh, for the UK and for Europe too uh, for the week ahead. And this is taking us from the 10th through to the 16th of September. So we can't show you the uh, mean sea level pressure or 500 millibar height anomaly uh, charts uh, with this, unfortunately. That date is not yet available. I think more and more of the ECM uh, longer range output is finding its way online. So eventually, I think the uh, mean sea level pressure and 500 millibar heights uh, will be showing up uh, from the ECMWF, uh, both 30 and 42 uh, day ensembles. But at the moment, we can only show you temperature and precipitation, but you can get a rough idea of what the model is expecting, I think, from these temperature and precipitation Anomalies. So we begin for uh, week one, which takes us from the temporary to the 16th of September. The coming week finds that it's a little bit cooler than average for the far northwest of Europe. So uh, Ireland, United Kingdom, uh, Norway, into Sweden, down to Denmark, coming out just a little bit cooler than average in those areas. Elsewhere across Europe, though, it's really a very warm scene, particularly these central parts of Europe, significantly warmer than average through much of uh, France in towards the south of Germany, uh, over the Alps in towards the north of Italy, I mean, going eastwards uh, of that towards countries like Hungary and uh, the south of Poland, coming out uh, around sort of three to six degrees above average, so quite, uh, quite a hot week, really coming up there and more widely across Europe it is um, coming out as a fairly uh, warm week as well so many of these northeastern parts of the country are above average uh, around one to three degrees above average and uh, unusually I think for the past few uh, weeks much of the Mediterranean is also coming out warmer than average as well generally quite a warm week to come uh, for the Med including southeastern parts of Europe. That's how the precipitation anomaly is looking for uh, the week ahead. So, again, you get a rough idea, I think, from this, what the pressure pattern is going to be. So, the northwest is coming out wetter than average, much of Scandinavia, above average rainfall, many parts of uh, northern Britain, anyway, and into Ireland coming out wetter than average in most regions. So, I think you can probably surmise that there's going to be low pressure uh, around here and probably bring in the jet stream free in that sort of area as well. Where it's drier than average, and that would be for France, into Belgium, Holland, Germany, over towards central, eastern parts of Europe. I think we can assume that in those areas we've probably got a ridge, we've probably got high pressure bringing warmer and drier than average conditions through this sort of area. So there's low pressure uh, up there, uh, the jet stream will be up there as well, and then there's high pressure through the central parts of Europe. Uh, interestingly, it looks like it's quite wet across eastern parts of uh, Spain and going over into the Balearic Islands, unfortunately, for anybody going on holiday there uh, from the 10th to the 16th of September. Um, further east of that, though, much of Italy, I mean, over the Adriatic, into the Balkans and down to southeast of Europe, many of those areas are actually coming out. Uh, uh, a little bit uh, warmer than average, a little bit drier than average, I should say. And then east of that again to the Black Sea, comes out a little bit 
uh, wetter than average. So a real sort of uh, mix of conditions across uh, Europe this week. But I think the main, uh, the main emphasis is on the more unsettled conditions in the northwest and then the high pressure through central parts of Europe. That's how uh, week two temperature anomalies are looking, taking us from the 17th through to the 23rd of September. It remains a warm scene across the central parts of Europe uh, once again. So really from uh, Germany going over to um, to Poland and then maybe eastwards into the towards the far west of Ukraine those areas and to the south of that uh, down towards Hungary for example those areas would be coming out uh, significantly warmer than average more widely across many parts of Europe again it does look to be uh, a mild of an average scene, a warm and average scene with temperature anomalies again around 1 to 3 degrees above average. Scandinavia turning uh, quite a bit warmer there, warmer than average for France, down into those central parts of the Mediterranean. Spain and Portugal coming out closer to average. And for the UK and Ireland, away from the southeast of England anyway, it looks like it's average to a little bit cooler than average for those areas too. So the coolest temperature anomalies are definitely in the extreme west of Europe here, but really from France eastwards, most places across Europe over to the Black Sea and the west of Russia are coming out uh, warmer than average from the 17th to 23rd of September. That's how uh, precipitation is looking, and again, it's quite unsettled for the northwest of Europe. So again, we see Spain and Portugal forecast to have uh, above average precipitation here, and uh, many parts of the UK going towards above average rainfall as well. So definitely, it looks like for the far northwest of Europe, autumnal conditions are setting in now, uh, with the jet stream uh, ramping up and bringing weather systems in from off the Atlantic. It looks generally a little bit wetter across many of these western parts of Europe. You'll notice the south of France, the Côte d'Azur, I mean, down towards uh, Corsica, Sardinia, uh, and also the Balearic Islands, all of these sort of central basin of the Mediterranean uh, regions, up to the Côte d'Azur, coming out uh, generally with a little bit above average in terms of the precipitation. The driest conditions look like they're across the east of Europe, uh, really. So many of those eastern parts of Europe still hanging on, presumably, to high pressure. But uh, in the northwest, it looks like it's much more unsettled in particular, with the jet stream coming through rather like that. Then we're through to uh, week three, and it's another cool week, actually. If, if anything, it's turned even cooler for the UK and for Ireland. So this is definitely the coolest uh, the coolest update that we've done for the northwest of Europe, anyway, since we've been doing this. I think we started these back in June. We haven't seen such extensive um, cooler than average temperature anomalies forecast on these charts uh, since we've been doing these updates uh, three or four months ago. So, again, for the UK and Ireland, we see a cooler than average temperature anomaly being predicted. And we're talking about uh, an, an anomaly of around 1 to 3 degrees below average. So, quite substantially cooler than average by the end of September in the northwest of Europe. Also, uh, southern parts of uh, Scandinavia, so Norway, Sweden, down to Denmark, we're coming out a little bit cooler than average for those areas. Central parts of Europe are cooling down as well. So after all that warmth that we have in weeks one and two, uh, week three does see a substantial cool down taking place across particularly places like Germany, where it had been uh, very warm up to this final week of September, definitely cooling down, uh, with the warmth being moved over towards the east and the southeast of Europe now. So from the west of Russia... Uh, down towards the Black Sea, I mean, down to the Balkans, in towards uh, countries like Romania, uh, those sort of areas, I mean, down to Greece and Turkey, we find that, again, the temperature anomaly is warmer than average. So the warmth is being shunted down to the southeast of Europe as the north and the west is cooling down. Notice going cooler than average across Spain and Portugal as well. Precipitation anomalies are uh, weakening, so despite that it's cooler across the northwest, it is actually going a little bit drier than average for the UK and Ireland this week, but only a very weak uh, sort of signal. 
Otherwise, we just see lots of average uh, conditions, and I think that's because Bermuda is probably losing the signal to some degree with these precipitation anomalies. The southern basin of the Mediterranean, from kind of like the Balearics over towards Corsica, Sardinia, and then towards Italy and over the Adriatic, that area looks a little bit more unsettled with above average precipitation, probably from thunderstorms but otherwise it's just a lot of average going on uh, there and that's probably due to the model beginning to lose its signal for uh, precipitation then finally we're into the first week of october week four takes us from the first through to the 10th of the set of the october and uh, it is still looking a little bit on the cooler side of the northwest of Europe. Although, again, the signal is weakening away. Definitely with these charts, the further out you go, uh, the weaker the signals become. But I think the hints are still there. But for the UK and for Ireland, and probably for Norway as well, we are uh, more or less on the colder than average side with the temperature anomalies. The far southeast of Europe looks a little bit warmer than average from the Black Sea down towards uh, Greece and Turkey. And then we find that to the rest of Europe is just coming out with average temperature. It's also a little bit cooler than average, I suppose, for Spain and Portugal. But really from France over towards uh, the rest of Europe, it is generally coming out with average uh, uh, temperature anomalies. And then finally for precipitation in the first week of October, taking us from the 1st through to the 7th of October... Uh, again, quite weak signals, probably hinting at being a bit drier than average around that sort of area. So parts of the UK down towards France, uh, maybe encompassing Germany, Poland, the low countries, probably Denmark. That area looks like it might be under some sort of a ridge uh, at this point. Uh, so that would leave the jet stream going off at there, maybe a bit unsettled across Scandinavia. And then southern parts of Europe, of course, it's a different uh, setup down there. We're into autumn, and with all the residual warmth, particularly in the Mediterranean Sea, we will be generating instability and the risk of thunderstorms. So that's what's going on through the Mediterranean uh, with autumnal thunderstorms, uh, but also some reasonably warm and dry conditions. So I think the takeaways from uh, this uh, ECM 30-day update is that the northwest of Europe is likely to be quite uh, cool in the coming month generally and fairly unsettled too. Certainly through the next couple of weeks, maybe trending drier uh, and possibly a little bit uh, milder as we get through to the end of September, start of October. That's a very long way off. I think generally the trend for September now with the ECM and it probably uh, it probably doesn't show up on other models. But so for the ECM, it looks like the trends are for uh, relatively cool conditions for the rest of September and quite unsettled too. Central parts of Europe starting off very warm. The warmth is pushed in towards the east of Europe by the end of September as central Europe begins to cool down. By the time you get through to the start of October, very weak signals. And we'll know more about October, I think, when we do next week's uh, update because that will take us further into October and uh, I think we'll get a better idea about what could be happening across Europe uh, when we get through to next week. Right, so that's your ECM doing your 30 day ensemble uh, look ahead done and dusty. Coming up this afternoon, we're going to have a look at the weather for next week to 10 days. We'll also include the Bayesian Climate Centre in that. No, we won't be including the Bayesian Climate Centre in that. We will include the ECMWF. Uh, let's start that again. So today's second video update will be coming up this afternoon. And uh, it's going to have a look at the uh, next week to 10 days. We will include in that the ECMWF season. Well, I just want to show you um, a sneak peek for the mean sea level pressure anomaly for the ECMWF seasonal uh, model for the winter. That would be one to uh, watch out for this afternoon. Uh, and uh, also with that, um, more seriously, will be uh, the situation in the tropical Atlantic, particularly in relation to Hurricane Florence, which is bearing down very, very rapidly now on the southeastern coast of America and could be pretty devastating. So more this afternoon. Come back for that then. That's all for now. And thanks for watching.